Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolay the Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 and today we're going to have a bit of a more special stream because tournament is this Saturday. There is a 2v2 tournament this Saturday, and it will be hopefully pretty good, pretty well attended, I hope. That's what we're all hoping for. So yeah, there is a sign-up in the Zero K forums, link in the description as well. There was also in the Saturday cast, I also linked there. That's going to be a 2v2 Swiss to start out, and then the top four teams in Swiss will move on to a bracket stage. Bit of a different setup for 0k, though not terribly unusual as far as tournaments go in general, so I'm excited to see how that works for us, seeing as, like I said, 0k tournaments have not been run in such a fashion. Normally it's been single or double elimination, so I kind of like the idea of Swiss into brackets. Should be fun. If you sign up, you'll get guaranteed at least four games. So why not? I think four, maybe five. It depends on the number of teams for the number of rounds, but I'm pretty sure that the minimum is going to be four rounds. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on to some games that are 2v2 just to get us into that spirit. First is going to be Rar and Dynthrund versus Spartacus and Flores the 14th on Valis Madonatus. So Rar starting out Gunship Plant, their second strategy in the northwest side. Dynthrund going for a Klugbot and then southwest side. And Spartacus in the northeast going for jump bot and Flores going for Cloaky as well. So one gunship player on this map, it's it kind of favors gunship, at least somewhat. It's not bad for gunship, that's for sure. I mean, look at the size of the map, look at the way that resources are spaced out. I mean, you can actually get a fair amount of mileage without using gunship just because the resources are fairly regularly spaced, but really it's hard to compete with gunship on a map this large. But that being said, East Team does have Archangels easily available, and of course Flores can quickly build up some Gremlins if need be, so it's not like it's going to be too difficult. Of course, teams being teams, one big difference is that they're not just dealing with the gunship, it's gunship Cloaky. So I imagine that Flores will probably be focused a bit more on keeping Dynefriend in check, while Spartacus, I guess, prepares Archangels? We'll see. Once they know what the Rar is going for, that Rar is going for the gunships, going for the Banshees, We'll see what they go for. Banshees are a bit of an odd beast because normally with Banshees you would go for a Riot unit. Warriors are a great choice for that. And it looks like Floris already going for that. I don't think they even know. Let's see. I don't believe so, but... No. Oops. No, there are. no, they don't. They do not yet know what's going on. They will soon enough, but they don't yet. And now they do. All right, what changes? Any particular strategic change? I mean, Flores is already going the right way. They have the warrior set up. They're already good. And Pyro, I, I mean, enough Pyros might work. I've never really seen Pyros used against, used against Banshees. I, I could see it being okay, but not great. And there's the Archangel. Okay, so we're going straight for the dedicated anti-air. That should work just fine. And Archangel does have enough firepower and is long range enough. It should be able to scare away Banshees easily enough. I've mentioned before that I find that Banshees don't tend to be scared away by most standard anti-air. But the thing that they do tend to be scared away by is a lot of rapid fire, rapid moving projectiles. And that's what you get with Archangel. On top of lasers, such as with Gremlin. So I think this is going to work out okay for Spartacus right now. Yeah, and already we're seeing just Banshees getting torn to shreds. Just no problem. And we're continuing to go for the Banshee. They are continuing to expand. It looks like the Western team is actually a bit behind economically. Eastern team already 10 metal ahead. With going for the Southeast over here. Just taking that. I mean, Flores really taking this entire Southeast area. Making sure that they have complete control over that. On the other hand, RAR not expanding a huge amount. They're almost focused entirely on military, not really focused on getting cranes or anything to take the northwest. While Dynefront, I mean, they have one Rector, or sorry, Conjurer going in the southwest. That's about it, and really is not building too much. So yeah, as it stands, there's basically two factories to one building up, or two players to one building up an economy. While Rar are trying to go for very dedicated offense, that's not really working out. Good scouting, though. They are managing to get the information. They know where East Team is set up. Beyond that, they aren't particularly aware. Like, they know what's set up. They don't really know where East Team is, though, since most of East Team's units are cloaked at the moment. Like, the anti-air is all hidden. 
And where was that warrior anyway? Oh yeah, there's the warrior. All right, so we do have the warrior up. That's going to be handy, but honestly, the Archangel Gremlin setup, that should be more than enough to get rid of these Banshees. Or at least scare, it should scare them off. Rar not being scared off, though. Very brave of those Banshees. Brave and or suicidal. I'm going to go with the latter in this one. Generous medal donation to the Eastern team from Rar, as the Eastern team is already 10 medal ahead. Though, I don't really see anything coming out of Spartacus's factory right now. They've been pretty idle. And right as I say that, another Freaker comes up. Some idle in the north as well. So, Spartacus getting that economy going. Looks like Spartacus is on economy. Floris is on military. Floris really starting to focus on that, too. Getting a couple care... Well, getting a caretaker up. But more importantly, they just were pushing a lot of resources into the factory. On the other hand, the western side, Rar continuing to move for Banshees. How many Banshees are there? Four Banshees in play so far. Diamond... Okay, they got the southwest more or less, but... They're not building a whole lot. The south side's pretty open. Floris, on the other hand, taking that, retaking it as it were, getting that set up. The only problem being lack of energy, but otherwise, this is working out okay. Time front to the north. What is there to defend? There's a lotus, there's a second lotus, there's a defender down here. This should be okay. The archangel's a little bit vulnerable, but probably not too terribly. Like, as soon as any attack happens, Spartacus should be able to move back that Archangel. They'll they'll handle it, no problem. I mean, they're aware of this, right? No! Oh, wow, that's actually apparently... That's not on radar? No, it isn't radar. It's just, for some reason, radar does not show up in the main map for some reason. On the minimap, we can see it's on radar. They know the Glaives are there. More Banshees coming up. Right into the Archangels, right into the Defenders. I mean, the Archangel is the real threat right now. But honestly, the Defenders, that extra support from the Defenders, stopping the Glades pretty much in their tracks. Well, the Archangel not actually surviving, so this is what I mean. Banshees don't really get scared away by traditional anti-air. They just have so much fire. They have, it's surprising, actually, given they only have 860 health, but it's enough for their cost. And, of course, the Venerable Puppy. Always, always a good choice to have against air. Forgot about those things. What does Jumpbot have for Banshees? Well, they have Archangels that work decently well, and actually they do. I mean, 550 cost, that was 700-ish, 800 cost? No, that was 1,000 cost of Banshees. Yeah. Not bad economically. Though, more importantly, that was all inside of the East Team territory, so the East Team can still reclaim it. How much reclaim is there, anyway? 430 metal worth of reclaim. Let's see what West Team's up to. There's got to be something going on here. I mean, I would imagine that the Western Team is to be changing up their strategy somewhat. But right now, Eastern Team on the offensive. Rar trying to scout around with these two Banshees. That's not quite all they have. A couple more are coming up. Diamond Looks like they're just... Okay, sides. I noticed something in the chat. They're mentioning they want someone assassinated. Diamond who do you need to assassinate? And Rar wants the commanders both dead. Well, one of them is pretty well behind its lines, but honestly, there isn't that much defending it. There are some puppies, though. Those puppies are in the right position at the right time. That could go... But this, okay, size have been revealed. This is a big deal. East team now knows the size are there. West team kind of giving it away, kind of a little behind, and these puppies should screen them out. There we go. One of those found it. Defenders already spotted. There, that's exactly what the Eastern team wanted. That was pretty much perfect. Puppies didn't quite kill the sides, but the important thing was, ooh, Rar also with the upgraded commander getting hit by puppies. But the important thing was the size got scouted out quickly enough. And Rar forced to retreat. Well, the Banshee's kind of forced to retreat. I mean, at this point, Rar could potentially go in and kill some commanders. I don't think it would make a difference, though. East Team is getting some reclaim off their commanders, yes. But they're really doing too much else with them. They are, however, getting a lot of mileage out of these armies. Northwest, North expansion taken out. That's... Even if the Glaives died, that was definitely worth it. I mean, as it is, the Eastern team is way ahead economically, so it's not a big deal. And Banshee's really risking it with those puppies. Like they, Banshee's cannot do that. It's actually something where I think rapiers work a lot better. That rapiers, I think, I think deal with puppies. Don't quote me on that one. It would make sense because rapiers can kind of hit and run, but rapiers are also kind of slow. So I think puppies might be able to actually get close enough to hit them. 
Wouldn't surprise me if they could. Banshees, however, they are in range. Like, Banshees just have no chance. And Flourish is keeping up that assault on the south side. Spartacus with a gunship plant over in their base. Nothing built up yet. Just about to now. They're going to start some stuff up. Well, they had it selected. There we go. Trident's setting up to get rid of all those Banshees. And that's going to be relatively effective, I guess. I mean, really, Flores' force right here is going to be the real moneymaker. Or, I guess, money smasher, because really all the money's been made so far. Map's pretty much split in half. Bit more being taken in the north. The south was pretty thoroughly conquered. And Warriors in position. Banshee's running straight into the Warriors. Exactly the last thing they want. Two go down with almost a third as well. Very little lost in that. That worked out beautifully for the Eastern team. And another set of cloaked units, but puppies are perfect screeners. And unfortunately, those warriors not in whole fire, revealing the fact that there was an eraser nearby. It's cloaking those warriors, and I mean, okay, the puppies can't deal with it directly, but East team knows. Spartacus knows. Flores might not be paying attention, but Spartacus knows. And hey, with enough puppies, that should be able to actually get rid of this. But I don't think that's how it's going to go. I think it looks like... Really, the south side is kind of the distraction. The north side, definitely a counterattack coming in from Dimethrin. That's the whole point of this. Try to get rid of the commander with cloaked units. The commander is doomed. The commander's dead. Spartacus's commander didn't really have a chance there. But as I mentioned before, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Spartacus had barely upgraded the commander. I think it wasn't... No, it doesn't matter now. I can't even tell. But it basically wasn't upgraded. Light particle beam was it. Yeah. One level of upgrade. Not a big deal. Not when you have 80 metal. Like, that's the thing, is that level of income difference, not a concern. And some transports coming up, too, from the looks of it. Oh, never mind. I was mistaken, but yeah, Rapier Trident coming up, so that's tearing apart. That should tear apart the forces without too much issue. I mean, these forces here, if they're spotted, the Rapiers will take them out. And then after that, it's just a matter of taking out the rest of this stuff here. Trident's not going to do too much good. That's really probably where Floris' forces come in. Diamond Friends Commander about to go down. Diamond Friends Commander clearly the main source of reclaim over in the south side. Well, forced to retreat. Not a bad thing either. I mean, if you can force them to retreat, get away from that reclaim. That's the important thing. That's the, like, once again, the late game, the commander is there to try to get reclaim. Like, commanders, RAR does push their commander, does really upgrade their commander. That's the thing RAR does. But if you're not upgrading your commander to level 4, 5, 6, you're not really pushing that. The big value is going to be the fact that you have a beefy body that can get resources from the front lines. Because normal workers can't just get resources off the front lines. I mean, they can, but they really risk themselves doing so. They have no way of defending themselves in the process. Unless they build a bunch of defenses and they have to fortify everything. So without fort as a mobile platform, they can't just defend themselves while reclaiming. Commanders can. That's a huge difference. So at this stage in the game... Yeah, it's a bit problematic that Spartacus lost their commander, but it's also problematic that Dimefron was forced to retreat and can't get this reclaim. Especially given that the West team is way behind. Although, nice scythe usage here. Getting rid of the jump bot factory. Totally missed that. Sorry about that. But still, getting rid of the jump bot factory. We do get to see the scythes getting stopped, but still, that factory gone down. Unfortunately for the Western team, the jump bot factory hadn't been used in the last five minutes, so it wasn't really a big deal. On the other hand, the... Well, the Western team really hasn't built up anything beyond the stand what they started with. Banshee's still for Rar. Oh, never mind. It looks like Dimefriend's going for Dante as well. So we do have still standard Zeus. Zeus Warrior, the Eraser, stuck in the middle. It hasn't actually done anything yet. I mean, it did that one assault, and it's been stuck there. Really, not much has changed, surprisingly. I mean, in terms of the unit composition, in terms of the actual positioning, Eastern team has been very rapidly taking the board. Like, they've just been taking the whole map. It has not been a problem. Especially now with the rapiers up, that's going to clear out everything. The north side's just done. North side's gone. The center, Flores has basically gotten that. Yeah, pretty much completely. The Flores has the center, just about. Dimefront has got a bit of the southwest, but that's about it. That really is about it. It's not going to do too much good. And RAR, 
Rar's commander, I don't know if this is even going to seal the game getting rid of this commander, because the commander right now, level 8, double lightning rifle, auto repair, and a bunch of range. Loads of auto repair, loads of range, loads of armor. That's basically how Rar plays it out. 75 healing per second, sheesh. But this is too much. Like, Rar's commander, I think, is dead? Like, Rar's commander is one where you want to kill it, because that's basically Rar's army, although at this point... Hasn't really done much either, and it's down. So Rar losing their commander, and thus losing a huge amount of their metal investment. Dying from a bit of an attack to the south, but stopped by a tick. So ultimately not able to do too much damage. Did manage to get rid of a few units here, but not a whole lot. Yeah, looks like Flores lost a bit of momentum, but that's about it. And really, with all the resources that the East team has, that's not a big problem. Now, where's that Dante, though? Six seconds left. There's the Dante just about on the field. I don't think that East team is that concerned, though. And we have a cloaky bot as well for Rar. So, Rar on the ground. Setting that up. Does have the commander on reclaim. If they get all these cranes reclaiming it, it looks like the plan is get the geothermal, reclaim all this with the with all these cranes. That's an extra 30 metal or so. Or this is 24. Extra 24 metal per second. Not a bad thing to have at this stage in the game. I mean, map position is definitely in East Team's favor. But with enough economy, I think it's recoverable. It would require a lot of really good plays in the meantime. But if they had the economy going, get all this reclaim going. All of it. Lot of reclaim, but if they can get this all going, that will last them how long? 1500 metal at 24. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. That should last them about 50 seconds. Not quite economic parity, but are they not going for it? What? Why are they not reclaiming this? That's huge. That is a massive thing. They need to. I, I don't know what Rar is doing here. I just don't get it. There's all this reclaim right here. I realize they probably don't realize they're way behind on metal, but they're way behind on metal, and it's never a bad idea to reclaim. So I don't understand why there's no reclaim going on over here in the Northwest. I guess I could understand if you're a little bit concerned about energy, but that's not a problem. Anyway, now it seems like regardless, Diamond actually did manage to an extent to get this Northwest side here. Sorry, the South side, not the Northwest. The south side has him taking my dime friend. The Dante doing a good job, actually. Doing quite a good job. Really slowing things down. Enough Rockos should be in position to stop it ultimately, but the point is, this reclaim has been taken. The reclaim field more or less has been taken. The economy should be at parity for a little while. And never mind. Okay, that's completely wrong. I mean, like I said, East Team just has a territory advantage. They've had territory or, econ or economy advantage this entire game. They really haven't been behind in a lot of ways. And the Dante being forced back somewhat. Rocco's still doing a bit of a job here. Not the best job, though, but honestly, at this point, East Team has got such a strong economy, I don't think they're concerned. And sharpshooters, mass production sharpshooters, just spam them out, I think, at this point. Okay, so, let's see. Dante has 1,100 health. Sharpshooters do 1,500 damage a shot. So, yeah, about, I think, six or seven sharpshooters should one-shot it. Mm, seven. Just about. Like, it'll be 500 health left, but it's not going to be at full health. So, yeah. That would probably do the trick. And at this point... Wow. Nice attack from Flores. Should be able to get rid of the factory. And, yes! This glaive is complete free reign. Going with the Spy Strider Hub instead. Actually, it's not going for anything. It's just sort of attacking. Good hero glaive there. But, yeah, at this point, East Team just pushing hard on everything. Pushing way too hard and everything for anything to be good. And apparently Rar was actually linking the geothermal plant. That's why they're building the energy here and not reclaiming. However, they aren't reclaiming regardless. Like, And honestly, when you're... It seems pretty desperate. I wouldn't go for the... Re, like The overdrive you'd get from that might be an extra 10 metal or so. Granted, it's permanent. But the reclaim you'd get is on the order of 20, 30. It's like two or three times greater. Yeah, it's temporary, but it's much greater. You can use that to build into better territory. I mean, 
Diamond Friends kind of lost their base. They do have the Dante. They are pushing decently hard. Dealing some damage, but it's basically in enemy territory with loads of sharpshooters. Wait, or not specters now. Loads of specters waiting to take it out. As soon as they get the chance, it's going down. And also, West Team is accessing, which does not help, but even then, like... Okay, put some characters on and get that set up, but still, it's... This is not going especially well. Dying Friend, with, with the Heavy Tank Factory of their own... I mean, on top of the Reapers and Banishers coming in, this... Well, I should say, coming in for Floris. East Team just pushing the North. I mean, the North is basically taken. There's not much stopping it. The Stardust is probably about the only real roadblock... Lotus protected by Solar Collector, not bad, but honestly, it's probably not going to be a big roadblock. And the Dante just got knocked out by, or knocked out, what am I saying? Putting the kid gloves on. Getting killed. It's gone. Smashed into wreckage by Spectre, so that's that's how that goes. Northside under heavy attack as well, but it looks like Rar able to chase away the Rapiers, mostly get, killing the Tridents, but I feel like the Tridents were practically just there as fodder. Like they were there to body block the rapiers. They weren't actually there so much to do any anti-air. Because, yeah, okay, air units are being built. There are cranes around. Those could be killed. Rar hasn't been building a lot of gunships. So getting rid of the Banshees is definitely a good thing. But at this point, the Tridents have been more just useful to stop shots from hitting the rapiers. Like, protecting the rapiers has basically been their job. And they did a pretty good job there. At this point, though, the Rapiers are getting too, way too cocky. Far, far too cocky. Spartacus, you might want to move those back. Donating a lot of metal to the Western team. I mean, they're starting to reclaim now. Like, now Rar is reclaiming in earnest. Everything I said before, now they're reclaiming in earnest. Just need a bit more production capacity. But other than that, Western team's getting that money going. Or at least for a little while. Still behind Eastern team, though. Eastern team's still way ahead. And that advantage does not seem to be letting up. Actually, Eastern Team also with Reclaim of their own looks like primarily in the south, but are there more Striders coming in? No, and the Heavy Tank Factory having been stopped, it looks like Dynefriend... Where's Dynefriend focused? I'm curious right now. Dynefriend just focused entirely on the combat over to the south. That's, that's it. That's all they care about is breaking through in the south front. I guess that makes sense, but at the same time, they have no production right now, or very little production. They have metal invested into things that aren't really being used. And Floris coming in for another pass. I mean, they have... Floris' gremlins just hanging out here, scouting everything going on. Rar is a bit safe. Rar is fine for now. Moving into assist as well, but honestly, Floris just dealing so much damage. I mean, that is... They sh probably could have moved a little bit further in, but that would have been suicide. So, it's a good thing they didn't. Still dealing even more energy damage. Breaking more connections into that linked grid. Making it even harder to get it built back up. Not that there's anything to link to. There aren't really any metal extractors over to the south. So really, overall, this is not working out for the western team. Finally, that offensive stopped, but that's not enough. I mean, the eastern team basically has the entire north side. They have the center pretty well completely taken. The south side is the only area that western team is going to find any respite. And even then, it's minimal. Eraser ever coming in. Eraser on these units. That's going to be the strategy to try to take this back. Still hard to say that that's going to work. I don't think it will. I mean, there's definitely room for surprise attack, especially given that warriors do kill rockers if warriors can get close enough. The Rocco advantage of range doesn't matter if they don't get to shoot first. And if the warriors get close enough first. So that will probably not matter, though, just given that as it is... We're seeing a lot of stuff just get smashed to pieces right now. I mean, Diamond Friend's entire base is gone. Diamond Friend's base is gone. Their commander is probably going to be wiped out. And that's their, I think, one shot at rebuilding? Oh, they have they do have a Conjurer around. The Conjurer's pretty close to dead, though. Once the Reaper sets its sights, that Conjurer's going to go down. Yeah, there we go. And the commander is over somewhere. Not entirely. Oh, right here. Commander jumping away, but way too weak. Dying Friend's basically done. Rar's about the only player on the Western team that's actually able to do much. But we do have rather ineffective sharpshooter assault. Unfortunately, did not work out. Completely got stuffed. Did not even expect that. I wasn't even looking back because I thought, oh yeah, it's going to be able to deal some damage. No. Sharpshooters tore to shreds to way too quickly for it to matter. 
And that was really kind of an overwhelming victory by the East team the entire time. That's... That's how it goes sometimes, I guess. I do feel like RAR really was pushing... Like, they pushed the Banshees and pushed the Banshees. Those Banshees were countered relatively early. They got information. They managed to deal a bit of damage to the south, but really, it didn't feel like they were used very much. It just felt like the East team just had all the initiative. They took it right from the start and never lost it. Except, I mean, the Dante kind of pushed a little bit in the south. That definitely started to turn things a bit, but not enough. And that's... That's how that went. So, I have another one in a couple moments. It's going to be... What's it going to be? There we go. It is going to be Lancelot and Capricis versus El Torero and Mur. Or Mur. Or Mur. I like Mur. On Cold Snap. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.